While researchers discovered in this particular study that we're about to review is a particular bacterial strain called Ruminococcus navis tends to be exceedingly high in individuals with lupus. This did two things. One, actually three things I should say. One, potentially early diagnosis of lupus by looking at this particular bacteria, Ruminococcus navis. Two, looking at what's causing or exacerbating it or how Ruminococcus navis actually creates uh, lupus or I should say at least the flare-ups of lupus. And three, potential treatment of Ruminococcus navis possibly between certain beneficial bacteria, if you want to utilize the word probiotic, as Bacteroides uniformis. All right, without it going too much further, incredible new twist in regard to lupus. Let's get right into the research as follows. Lupus, strongly linked to imbalances in gut microbiome. The disease, systemic lupus erythematosus, marked by an attack on joints, skin, and kidneys by the body's immune system, is linked to an abnormal mix of bacteria in the gut. The new study published in the Annals of Rheumatic Disease, online February 19th, showed that 61 women diagnosed with SLE had five times more gut bacteria known as Ruminococcus navis than 17 women of similar ages and racial backgrounds who do not have the disease. Moreover, study results showed that disease flares, which can range from instances of obviously skin rash, joint pain, to severe kidney dysfunction requiring dialysis, closely tracked major increases in Ruminococcus navis bacterial growth in the gut alongside the presence in blood samples of immune proteins called antibodies specifically shaped to attach to the bacteria. Study participants with kidney flares had especially high levels of antibodies to Ruminococcus navis. All right, to just basically to confirm, I'm gonna look at the, the uh, abstract, or I should say the abstract from the full study itself, but the full study is published online. Notably, patients with SLE had an overall five-fold greater representation of Ruminococcus Navis. Back to the public study. Our studies, we're quoting, our study strongly suggests that in some patients, bacterial imbalances may be driving lupus and its associated disease flares, quoting the senior investigator. Our results also point to leakages of bacteria from the gut as a possible immune system trigger of the disease and suggest that the internal gut environment may therefore play a more critical role than genetics in renal flares of this all too often fatal disease, according to the researcher. They also suspect that antibiotics to Ruminococcus navis provoke a continuous and unrelenting immune attack on organs involved in flares. To proceed, more on the more practical consequence of the new research, Silverman says, could be the development of relatively simple blood tests to detect antibodies to leaked bacteria. In this case, leaked bacteria being Ruminoco uh, Ruminococcus navis, which could in turn be used to diagnose and track lupus progression as the bacteria begin to multiply, if not impeded somehow. And therapy, even the disease's earliest stages. Current tests, he says, are often inconclusive and rely on symptoms and signs reverse that there, that only appear after the disease has already advanced. Now the future treatment part, we get into basically the hypothesis in regard to, all right, someone has lupus, what do we do? Instead, Silverman says future treatments could include inexpensive probiotics or dietary regimens that impede Ruminococcus nervous growth and prevent flares. Transplants from healthy individuals would also be a possibility. Alternatively, New treatments could also be used to promote growth of Bacteroides uniformis, bacteria thought to hinder the growth of Ruminococcus navis in the gut and whose numbers decreased by as much as fourfold in study participants with lupus when compared to those without the disease. Experts say there's over a thousand different types of bacteria to make up the human gut microbiome. All right, what we're gonna do right now is we are gonna go to the full published study and look at the conclusions from that particular study. Again, as always, at least a on the YouTube channels, so I'm able to post the links to the study itself so you can look into it a little more depth on your own. And it is fascinating. But to proceed as follows. All right, so what to add? 
Patients with lupus were found to have characteristic patterns of gut microbiome dysbiosis that directly parallel disease activity. Patients with systemic lupus erythematosus commonly displayed signs of impaired gut barriers that may result in immune exposure to gut commensal bacteria. Intestinal expansions, Ruminococcus navis, were directly proportional to overall disease activity and most pronounced in those with lupus nephritis. Lupus fecal samples displayed increases, I believe that's immunoglobulin A, coated RG bacteria. In three independent cohorts, patients with lupus nephritis, nephritis displayed elevated serum immunoglobulin G, predominantly to Ruminococcus uh, navis strain restricted cell wall lipoglycan antigens. So, real promising in regard to first finding out the correlation, what is elevated during these flare ups, what may be even a potential cause, whether it be leaky gut, somehow Rheumatococcus navis is entering the bloodstream, somehow triggering immune reactions. Especially since Rheumatococcus navis, for whatever reason, tends to be up to fivefold higher in individuals that do not seem to have symptoms of lupus. And as well as that, potential treatment. Uh, basically in regard to Bacteroides uh, uniformis, uh, bring in Ramonococcus navis levels down as, as hypothetically a nice counterbalance to that potentially very harmful bacteria in individuals with lupus. So in short, I hope you find this information of use. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate you all listening. And as always, thank you very much and look forward to see you all once again in seven days. See you next time. Bye.